Hello everyone, this is me Rabab Zehra from TechX Media. We are at Jitex Global 2024 and right now I have with me Mr. Echo Nelson. He is Head of Global Customer Unit EN and General Manager for Ericsson UAE. So let's welcome Echo in on TechX Media. Hi Echo, how are yeah, you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Very it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Yes, uh, the pleasure is all mine too. Uh, so Echo, um, uh, I will start with uh, the, uh, my first question is about uh, 5G. How has Ericsson's role evolved uh, with the rollout of 5G? And what are the key milestones that you have achieved this year in 2024? So 5G is like the next generation of the mobile technology. And as with previous generations, it starts with a standardization process. Um, Ericsson is um, very involved in the standardization process to create and define the standards for the technology. Um, we are represented on the 3GPP standards bodies uh, and various associated and uh, ancillary bodies. So we help define, along with the other vendors in the industry, um, what the standard should be. So that's really the first milestone. Uh, but prior to the, um, the first approved standard, there were some initial deployments of 5G in the US, uh, largely by Verizon, uh, before the final stand standardization happened around 2018. Uh, and we were very much involved in that. Uh, a lot of that is learning what happens when you deploy the technology on the ground and then there's a feedback loop that goes back into redefining and retuning the standards. So anyway, once the standards were done, we had a large wave of deployments in mainly two continents, uh, largely in Asia Pacific and specifically in Korea, South Korea, one of the leading countries that first deployed 5G. And there was a massive rollout of 5G across North America. So those were the early front runners. And then the Middle East, um, led by the UAE and Saudi, and then Qatar, uh, where the next wave that also rolled out 5G. This is, must be around 2019, 2020. Uh, that's where most of the rollout started happening in our part of the market. And uh, I was part, I was part um, of the team and responsible for the rollout of 5G with me and in the UAE. Uh, and then uh, after that, the Europeans have always been very slow in this largely because of the regulation and the regulators in Europe have perhaps not been as uh, progressive uh, and also there's a whole economics around the price of the spectrum which was prohibitive uh, for many of the European players to actually buy um, uh, 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 the spectrum that was needed for 5G. Uh, so the next wave happened around last year or the year before when India took off like a storm uh, and India now has probably in a very short space of time about 95% coverage of 5G and critically they are the ones with the largest deployment of what we call 5G standalone. So when you're talking about the milestones there were two main milestones in 5G. There's a first milestone called 5G non-standalone and 5G standalone. In simple terms, 5G non-standalone basically means that 5G depends on 4G to work. Mm -hmm. So it basically uses the existing 4G as a crutch to come up. 5G standalone is literally what it means. It's 5G standalone. Yes. So many of the deployments that you've seen in 5G, and there's about 200 of them around the world, mm -hmm. are non-standalone 5G. The next phase is the standalone and standalone is what delivers many of the promises that 5G actually promises like low latency, uh, faster speeds and uh, network slicing and various other uh, um, features of 5G. So uh, India and one operator in, in India in particular decided to skip non-standalone and went straight to standalone and India has got one of the largest deployments of 5G standalone, even though they were late to the party. Now we've got the next phase, which is called 5G Advanced, 
5G as well plus is being rolled out in the US, also in the UAE now, uh, and in some of the Gulf countries. And Ericsson has been at the forefront. Uh, we are outside of China, the leading, uh, we have the leading market share or the biggest market share uh, in 5G outside of China uh, globally and have more deployments than any other vendor. That's interesting. So that's a, this is a proper timeline of events uh, when it, it didn't happen overnight. So it was a proper timeline of events. And, uh, um, so um, moving on to my next question, private 5G networks are uh, gaining traction now. Yeah. What is Ericsson strategy in adopting it? So 5G was created uh, to be a platform for innovation. A uh, platform for innovation also to be able to digitalize the enterprise. Uh, and private 5G has been around for a little while, but it's beginning, as you say, to really flourish. Uh, Ericsson has been, again, at the forefront of helping to define what private and 5G number. And we have a different portfolio because a private 5G network is really a unified network that is designed to replace the multiplicity of connections that an enterprise may have uh, in a factory or in an industrial or enterprise setting. So typically they would have a bit of ethernet, they will have a bit of uh, Wi-Fi, they will probably have you know, some proprietary ne ne networks. Many of these networks don't work together mm. and sometimes many of these networks conflict with each other. What 5G aims to do is to remove all of these different networks and replace them with a highly reliable and highly dependable um, uh, mobile network across the entire enterprise. So we've been designing products. Uh, we've got a product uh, like in the, what we call the private um, 5G space uh, for quite some time, uh, mainly in North America mm -hmm. and, and in Europe. Uh, we've been connecting many of the enterprises, including ports and oil and gas companies. Uh, and interestingly for ourselves, what people don't realize is that we are also a manufacturing company because we manufacture the equipment. So we have factories that manufacture equipment. And we, in Louisville, in Texas, we've deployed a private network in our own factory to help us manage the whole production process to demonstrate to the world that, you know, what we are saying, we are actually um, living what we are preaching. Yes. Uh, and so this we've done in the US, we've also deployed that same technology in Estonia, uh, in, in Europe, where we have our other factory. One of the things that we found was, when we first deployed it to the factory in the US, that US factory was about two times as productive as the factory in Estonia. Mm -hmm. And now we've also moved the Estonia factory also into a 5G network. So we have, you know, not just the products, but we have the proof points within our own organization on how private uh, uh works and uh, have a whole portfolio. Uh, some of them have come through acquisition uh, that we made. So we made our acquisition of a company called Cradle Point, uh, which provides um, 5G wireless uh, one. Uh, so we've got 5G routers that are put into vehicles. So you have a private 5G network in your fleet. Uh, or vehicles like ambulances, police cars, uh, municipalities in the US what have widely deployed this uh, across many jobs. That's that's great. Uh, so, um, uh, last question from my side. Uh, with all this happening in 5G, private networks, 5G evolving, uh, 5G advanced, security concerns are rising among the users. So, how what steps Ericsson is taking to um, uh, combat those security threats? Security is inbuilt into 5G, and one of the things that you have with telecommunications uh, is that because it's standards driven, mm -hmm. there's a lot of effort that goes into thinking about security before the products are, before the standards are published. So security is native in the way 5G is built. Uh, and uh, from the point of view of the products and uh, you know, what we offer, uh, there are all kinds of encryption techniques that are used to make sure that data is preserved and uh, 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 user identities and sensitive data are not compromised. So there are various techniques that are used which are embedded at the heart of the tech, at the heart of the technology. That's great. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this valuable information with us. It was a pleasure talking to you.
pleasure thank you thank you for watching stay tuned to techx to know more about what is happening at jitex global 2024 goodbye